I am optimistic this evening that we will not have technological challenges as we did last week. Hopefully I'm correct. It's really good to see everyone. Cantor, can we join with any, join together with any goon? We absolutely can, yes. so good to see everyone as we gather on Zoom. It's always a highlight of the week. Shabbat's always been a highlight, but especially these days. So it's just good to see you. I'm told that my colleague, uh, Reverend Sarah Butter, is on our service this week. I want to welcome her. I want to welcome people whose family members are far and wide and gather in this room. Let's do one of our heart taps or a wave as we wish each other Shabbat Shalom. Today was actually a holiday, the holiday of Shavuot, and last night we celebrated the service of confirmation, the graduates of our high school program. And uh, they made a video, it's about four minutes, kind of a compilation of some parts of the essays they wrote. And we'd love to show it before lighting candles. And so Rabbi Sherman, words from our seniors. I have been lucky enough to have had many opportunities to explore my Judaism. So when I think of the prompt to me Judaism means, I think of the accumulation of past experiences that have each had an impact on my Jewish identity. Being Jewish, I take a huge amount of pride in our culture that has survived throughout the millennia. And to me, even the smallest things such as matzo ball soup represent being part of a small, tight-knit community. Food has always been a focus point of my life, not just because I needed to survive or because it tastes so good, but because it brings people together. Every Friday night, my family takes a break from the craziness of our week when we may not all eat together and we sit down to celebrate Shabbat and have a family meal. To me, Judaism is and always will be a home filled with people who, even if they are complete strangers, all share that same knowing smile and an immense capacity to welcome more and more people in. Being Jewish means burning my tongue on matzo ball soup on the first night of Passover. Holidays. Being Jewish means automatically having new friends wherever you go because someone else is Jewish too. Connection. To me, being Jewish means believing in God. What makes Judaism so special is that if you see Judaism as only religion, you're only getting half the picture. When you say Jewish food or Jewish humor, those things are not necessarily religious. Katz's Zeli is not a synagogue nor a Seinfeld a book of the Talmud. To me, being Jewish is about community. From the time I was in preschool to the present day, I have always been taught to surround myself with good people and help others in need. Two things which I believe create the base for a community. When we came to Temple Beth Elohim for the first time, 
There was something different about services. Everything about the temple felt warm and fuzzy. The way that we were welcomed into this community makes you feel at home. As we came to more and more services, I felt like I was starting to really feel Jewish. The countless opportunities that have stemmed from being a member of TVE have fulfilled so many dreams of mine, and I'm only 18. With all of this being said, it is the people that I have met and the friends that I have made that have allowed me to grow as a person and a leader over the past five years. Some of my best friends for life came from camp, and I genuinely believe that it was because of not only my connection with them as a person, but connection with them as a Jew. All Jewish communities are part of a larger community, and when something affects one small part, it affects us all. My Judaism is defined by community. When life is being redefined, we redefine Judaism right along with it. Being Jewish is about dedicating our hearts to each other. It's about reaching out to find support in times of need and being ready to give support to others when it's their turn. At that moment, we were a community. That has shown me what Judaism means to me. A family wherever you go, support, community, and fighting for what you believe in, even if others disagree. I am, for the first time in my life, using my Jewish values for my healing. I'm okay because I'm recognizing the power of connection, kesher, as we visit our grandparents in isolation. I'm okay because I'm recognizing the power of compassion, chesed, as we donate to a different COVID relief effort every week. I'm okay because I'm recognizing the power of resilience, hosen, as we try to remain in high spirits during a trying time. Overall, I have realized that this period is a moment of fear and awe, a period of yira, as I am both afraid of today's uncertainty, but amazed by my newfound trust in Jewish values. Throughout the years, I have learned to be so accepting of not only others, but of myself. The concept of B'Tselem Elohim, the idea that we are all created in God's image, has struck me as a big part of being Jewish. After some reflection, I realized that for me, my whole life is my Jewish journey. Every day and each person I interact with, I feel Jewish because I'm acting with the values that are important to me. To me, Judaism doesn't just have one definition. It is conflict, it is tension, it is community. The beauty of Judaism is that it is all of those things and more. And being Jewish doesn't mean just choosing one of those definitions, but embracing all of them in their hypocrisy and choosing to wrestle. But I'd say that's the beauty in Judaism. Judaism to me isn't about a high power, nor is it even about answers. It's about asking questions. Judaism is wrestling with these ideas and not necessarily the ideas themselves. Being Jewish is 4,000 years of Jewish history. It's stinging cuts in the Dead Sea. It's Jewish geography. It means screaming Am Yisrael Chai into oblivion because despite the unlikelihood of it, we are still here. Thank you to our seniors, Mazel Tov. We celebrate you. Uh, what a beautiful job. And uh, we wish you so well uh, in the future, whatever it may bring. Let us now begin Shabbat with the lighting of our Sabbath candles. And Susan Karen is celebrating her 25 years at TBE this weekend. And so we've asked Susan, along with Jeff and Michael, Susan, if you'll light candles for us, and you can see the, the heart taps that surround you on this Shabbat. Susan will light the candles.
the rabbis teach us that on Shabbat, we get a taste of the world to come. That there's something sweet, something special, something perfected and perfect about Shabbat. And so we begin with the words of Shalom Aleichem on a week when we need so much more peace in this world. We invite peace to come to us as we bring forth and bring us all into Shabbat together. Shalom Aleichem. Shalom Aleichem, Malachi Hasharit, Malachi Elion, Mimelech, Malachi Hamachim, Hakadosh Baruch. Continue with words, Ahavat Olam. We celebrated Shavuot last night and today, celebrating the receiving of Torah and Ahavat Olam is this expression of love to God and God to us for being able to live out the words of these Torah. So let us join together. Turn to the fullness of our community by going back to gallery view and joining together with words of Shema. Shema. Oh, 
for our people has come in two forms. One of the keva of the fix, the prayers that we recite on a daily basis, and the other kavana, the prayer and intention of our heart that should speak to us in this specific moment in time. Our prayer by Rabbi Naomi Levy has been a prayer of this time of pandemic. So let's join together. We are frightened, God, worried for our loved ones, worried for our world. Helpless and confused, we turn to you, seeking comfort, faith, and hope. Teach us, God, to turn our panic into patience and our fear into acts of kindness and support. Our strong must watch out for our weak. Our young must take care of our old. Help each one of us to do our part to halt the spread of this virus. Send strength and courage to the doctors and nurses in the front lines of this battle. Fortify them with the full force of their healing powers. Send wisdom and insight to the scientists working day and night across the world to discover healing treatments. Bless their efforts, God. Fill our leaders with the wisdom and the courage to choose wisely and act quickly. Help us, God, to see that we are one world, one people, who will rise above this pandemic together. Send us health, God. Watch over us. Grace us with your love. Bless us with your healing light. Hear us, God. Heal us, God. And let us say, Amen. We continue now with prayer of Hashki Venu, our English version, as we ask God to shelter us in a sukkah of peace. next prayer we traditionally stand but if you choose to remain seated we just suggest that you sit up a little straighter or place your feet more firmly on the floor as we continue together with the words Adonai Svatai O God open up our mouths that we may declare your praise Adonai, Open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. This evening, as a creative Amida, I'd like to share a prayer, one that we're going to offer in our Sunday evening service of hope and renewal. And at the very end, after that line, let me find joy in, we're going to open up the chat. 
And I'd like to invite you to share words that come to mind because we are living in a time where both sweet and bitter are juxtaposed and we hope that we can focus on the blessings. O source of life, keep me in awe of sunrise and sunset, rainbows, moonlight and stars, seasons melting into seasons. Keep me in wonder of things grand as mountains and oceans, as humble as dandelions and daisies, as miraculous as butterflies emerging from cocoons. Let me find joy in ordinary days, contentment in quiet living, delight in small pleasures. Let me embrace happiness, celebrate life. Let me find joy in. And we take a moment now to catch our breath, a moment of silent prayer, followed by a badly needed prayer for peace. this time we turn to a prayer of healing, a prayer of Misha Berach. And so we ask prayers, we ask God for prayers of healing, of spirit, of mind, of body, of soul. We ask God for healing for a broken world, for broken, for pain and anger. We ask healing for an infected world. And I personally ask healing for my hometown. And so we ask for God to bring healing upon us and all of God's creatures. And so I want to invite you at this time, as we add our collective prayers of healing, to share the names of those who we are praying for at this time. Oh, <laughs> 
as you know on Shabbat we also give thanks for those sacred moments we've shared during the past week and I know that this has been the season of weddings in years past so I want to wish a mazel tov to Lisa and Wilton Levine on their high anniversary 18 years uh, Jill and Hal Leibowitz are also celebrating an anniversary and their son Matthew was married to Danny just this past Sunday and uh, also, Andrew and Pam Norden, your 15th anniversary, I'm told. So mazel tov. I know there are others celebrating as well. So if you'll just raise your hand, if you're celebrating an anniversary, we'd love to wish you a mazel tov. How about a birthday during the past week? Any birthdays? Lori, I see you waving. <laughs> And others, oh, pointing to the back. Mazel tov. Birth, life, healing, or just a heart tap for a God-given moment. It's also a tradition to say Shechianu for a new fruit. I had my first watermelon of the season. Um, this, so I get to say Shechianu just for that. But for all of these things, for new life, for love, for another year upon this earth, for fresh fruit, for the beauty of nature, let us give thanks. Answer, I am hoping we can sing a Simon Tav U Mazel Tav as well, because as we know, it is Susan Karen's 25th anniversary at TBE, and Susan has been a steady presence in welcoming people to our community, to our building, making them feel as family and at home. And so on this, her 25th anniversary at TBE, we ask for God's blessing upon her as she sits with her family and is in the presence of all of us. With these words, Eloheinu v'lohevotenu, O God, God of our forefathers and mothers, bless Susan on this day, for we are thankful for her 25 years of service to our community and are deeply appreciative of her hard work and dedication. And on this evening, we pray that she always know the joy of serving you, O oh God, by continuing to welcoming people into our lives, into our community, and bringing them to a life of Torah, a life of meaning, and a life of good deeds. May Susan, through her dedication and hard work, continue to strengthen us. And may she always be blessed with health and friendship and a deep knowledge of our community's gratitude that she has made a great difference in our world. And let us all say, Amen. <laughs> Thank you.
Rabbi Sherman, can you hear me? I can, Rabbi Sissenwein. I shouldn't jinx it. <laughs> I'm so glad that Zoom is working this week. So last week, it was at about this time when uh, things went a little nutty. So uh, I, I'm feeling good about this. I was able to start this sermon, and I got about one minute in and then just kind of gave up. But I know that this is a congregation that likes a good joke. So I have to return to the sermon because it was two weeks ago that I, I kind of threw down a challenge to our Zoom community. And that was that if you could email me a Jewish joke that I had never seen, heard, told, you would win a pizza. And immediately after that Shabbat two weeks ago, the emails started streaming in with joke after joke after joke. And some were actually funny. Most were definitely not. And a large majority were so inappropriate that I can't tell them at all. And then I went to tell the sermon and everything went crazy. And it was so frustrating I was so disappointed because I love our Shabbats so much that the week was hard until this morning when someone sent me an email that brought a smile to my face. So Rabbi Sherman, can, I show, can we show the attachment of the email? for gathering for our 10th Shabbat service. It's how we keep track of the weeks. May the light of our Zoom Shabbat service may illuminate our house the way your spirit may illuminate my soul. Rabbi, can you hear me? Rabbi, can you see me? Rabbi, I can't find you in the Zoom room. I think your mic's not working. Your camera is not working. Rabbi, can you check your internet connection? Looking at the gallery, I see a million eyes, but can't Yours. Where are you now? That quarantine is here in temples closed its doors. Please reboot your router. Should I say it louder? We should be singing Die knew that we are all together. I please forgive me, I think my oven's beeping. I have to go and show off my fresh hollow. You hear me praying, anything I'm saying. I, 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 I love. Are all the Zoom outages causing you to be a frozen head? Let's count the old mayor instead. Your phone might be better. Turn off the Wi Fi on your computer. Never mind, it's just as bad, which makes us sad. Why were you Zoom bombed? Please retype zoom.com.
Okay, to the Scholl family, like amazing, I'm cracking up. I thank you, extraordinary. Can you hear me? Good. So that, that definitely brought a smile to my face this morning. Um, I have received joke after joke after joke, and it's really, I wanna thank all of you because it's just what I needed during these challenging times. And as I said before, some were funny, most were not, and the large majority of them I just can't share with you because they're inappropriate. But what I noticed about almost all of them was that they usually shared a common theme. And that theme was that they were usually filled with a little bit of insult and very often family bickering, which made me wonder, you know, what makes a joke Jewish? Like, is it just that the names have to be like Moshe and Shlomo? Or is there something deeper there that actually makes it Jewish? And somehow it seemed like it had to be family bickering. So here was one. One day, Miriam and Sarah are having one of their deep chats when Miriam sighed and said, you know, Sarah, if something ever happened to my Moisha, I don't think I could ever marry again. And Sarah replied, I know what you mean. Once is enough for me too. But I'll bump. Okay, bad. What do you think? I'm looking for reviews. Jewish? Yeah, really bad. All right, bad, bad. Beth Israel Synagogue was providing marriage seminars for men, some for women, and some for couples. At the men's seminar last week, the rabbi asked Shlomo about his marriage. And Shlomo replied that he had been married for almost 50 years. Well, the rabbi was so impressed. And so he asked Shlomo to, to take a few minutes and share some insight with the group about how he managed to stay married with the same woman for all of these years. And Shlomo answered him. He said, well, I've tried to treat her nice. I spend money on her. I help her keep a kosher home. And I take her on trips. Best of all, I took her to Israel for our 25th anniversary. And the rabbi said, Shlomo, you're an inspiration to all the husbands here. Please tell us. What are you planning for your wife for your 50th anniversary? And Shlomo replied, I'm going back to Israel to pick her up. Bun up bump. Still bad? I, I, I'm just going to stop there. Now, I must admit, these are terrible jokes, and I grew up with them. No one stumped me, no pizzas. I used to joke that when I was younger, I didn't know the Jewish forefathers were Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, because I always thought they were Mel Brooks, Carl Reiner, and Woody Allen, the old Woody Allen. I knew our forefathers as Jackie Mason and Lenny Bruce and Don Rickles. I knew them as Rodney Dangerfield and Buddy Hackett, and most of all, Henny Youngman all Jewish comedians sharing their lives with a really healthy dose of self-deprecation and insult and complaint, and more often than not, a little maritable, marital bickering. And so I actually placed a phone call to the foremost authority on American Jewish humor, Rabbi Moshe Waldox, the author of the big book of Jewish humor. And I asked him, I said, Moshe, what makes these jokes Jewish? And why do they so often include criticism, especially within the Jewish family? And like any good researcher, he gave me an academic response, not a joke. He said it actually goes back to Eastern Europe, the original borscht belt, where they literally ate borscht quite a bit, and where most American Jews can trace their lineage. And back in Eastern Europe, life was tough. Today, like staying inside with computers would have looked easy to our ancestors. 
And so one way they survived was humor. And it all started with a popular writer who went by the name Shalom Alechem. And Shalom Alechem wrote these humorous stories that usually focused on two characters. One was a simple man, a tevya from Fiddler on the Roof, who studied and went to the market. And the second character was a strong Jewish woman who ran the home. And the joke was in the Alechem stories was that the man thought he was in charge, but it was actually the woman who made all of the decisions. And of course, Waldox playfully said to me, just like they do today. Now, I'm not sure if that's true, but in every story, it was the woman that made the important decisions, like where should we live? Or where should we send the kids to school? And so the early American Jewish comics, who were men, started writing jokes about these strong Jewish women. And the first jokes they told were about the Jewish mother-in-law. So the mother-in-law jokes were basically, your strong Jewish mother was meant to build you up, and your strong Jewish mother-in-law was meant to tear you down. And there were these mother-in-law jokes. And then eventually it shifted, in the next decade, to Jewish mother jokes. The strong woman, but a little bit controlling. The strong Jewish mother who is loving, but sometimes a little smothering at the same time. And these jokes worked for decades until these Eastern European Jewish comics began to make it in America. And American Jews did too. And they moved to the suburbs. And a sign of their success was not that their wife was working and was strong, but a sign of the success was that they were able to shower everything upon their wives and give them the best that America could offer, which led to what we know as the Jewish American princess jokes, which really dominated the landscape in the 60s and 70s and 80s, and are no longer appropriate or even really told today. But what's interesting to note, so it evolves from mother-in-law to mother to, to Jewish American princess, but during the same time, American Jewish women are responding in comedy. And many American comedians are Jewish, from Sophie Tucker in the 20s and 30s and 40s and 50s, who's actually known as the last of the hot mamas, to Joan Rivers, to Tony Fields, to Phyllis Diller, and even today to Amy Schumer and Chelsea Handler and the fictional Miss Maisel that many of us watch on TV. All strong Jewish women poking fun at their husbands or boyfriends or families. And so my question remains, why? Why does the Jewish joke contain such complaint and insult and usually a, a banter, especially within the family. And for that, I couldn't turn to an academic. I had to turn to the Torah, because I think the answer is actually in our Torah portion. For this week, we read from the book of Numbers, in Hebrew, Bamidbar, which literally means in the desert. And we find that as soon as the Jews are in the desert, they begin to complain and insult, and bicker. And then I asked myself, why? Why in the desert do they complain? And the answer is because they can. Because they're now a family. After three long books of Genesis and Exodus and Leviticus, in numbers they finally feel comfortable with each other. And we all know that the safest place to complain when things are hard and you need to let off a little steam in a dry and demanding desert is in the home where we feel the safest. And so today, when so many of us are stuck within the home and may find themselves beginning to complain or insult or even bicker, I thought I would offer a little advice on when I think the joke can be funny, and when I think you just shouldn't tell it at all. 
So here we go, some corona advice on humor. I think the humor can be funny when you know your audience. I think it's okay to banter or playfully criticize when you know your family possesses a trust that will allow you to poke a little fun at each other and then resolve the issue later. But you need to know before you offer a joke that you're able to revisit the hurt later in a safe place, that you'll be able to discuss the matter and process it if the need arrives. And I think it's okay to banter if you can process those needs later while not ruining your day waiting for that moment. I think it's okay to banter if you know you're playing a role, a character in the family of yourself and, and the other person acknowledges it as well. And you can discuss it later. I think it's okay to banter if the person making the joke is self-deprecating and can always make fun of themselves too. And I think it's okay to banter only if it's respectful, if it's never impugning the other's character, but rather the attempted humor is perceived as letting off a little steam when the air is just a little too suffocating. And only then will I count it as Jewish humor, because Jewish humor can be funny, even when it's a little pointed or angry or bitter. Not just from Rodney Dangerfield or Mel Brooks, but all the way to Larry David and Jerry Seinfeld and Sarah Silverman. Jewish humor has helped our people through some very difficult times. And Jewish jokes can be really funny. They can help us if we tell them carefully and we know our audience and we can revisit some of those themes in a safe and trusting way. Jewish jokes can be okay. And then we have to remember that some jokes, well, they're just inappropriate and just shouldn't be told at all. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Rabbi, there's now COVID humor that is quite something. <laughs> so we'll have to have that conversation. God, guard my speech from evil and my lips from deceit, deception. Elo hai nit so de shani me ra, us wa taim yi da bear mi amar. Vilim kale la in af shi ti dob, in af shi ke af fala koti ye, elo hai, elo Susan, if you could begin to organize, we're going to deliver pizzas to the Shoal family every hour on the hour throughout the night for the next seven days. We're just going to, you know, knock on their door, leave it there because of Corona and make sure that pizza is to their house. What do you think? Thanks. They seem to be really excited about that. I'm watching them. So <laughs> that's great. Let so, us now, uh, before we conclude, uh, recite our final prayer. And uh, of course, that is the words of Mourners Kaddish. And each week, we allow the mourners in our midst to stand in front of us on the screen so that we can acknowledge them or raise their hand. So if you are observing a yard site or currently within the period of mourning, we invite you to identify yourself as a mourner. 
I also want to read the names of Justin Blauner, father of Peg Metzger, William Bloom, the grandfather of Joe Blumenfeld, as well as Marsha Pastor, uh, Joe's mother and um, Michelle's grandmother. And um, think of, we think of all of them and uh, the many people who are listed in our chat room. And if we can place the words of Mourner's Kaddish on the screen. Yitkadal v'yitkadash shemerabah v'yalma divrach rute v'yamlich malchute v'chayachon v'yomechon v'chaye d'cho b'yit Yisrael v'galav izman kari v'imbru amen. Yehe shemerabah mevarach le'alam olamei omaya yitbarach v'yishtabach v'yitbar v'yitromam v'yitnasei v'yitadar v'yitale v'yitalal shemed k'rusha b'reichu Le'elamin ko berchata v'shirata, tushbachata v'nechamata. V'amiran v'yalma v'imru amen. Yehei shlama rabba min shamaya v'chayim aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'mromav, hu yase shalom aleinu v'yal kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom Shalom, shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. Yase shalom, yase shalom, shalom aleinu v'al kol Yisrael. A few announcements before we conclude. We hope that you will join us tomorrow morning for Shabbat Torah study at 10 a.m. and conclude the day with us at 6.30 with Havdalah. Perhaps we'll be outside together. A few announcements for this week. I want to call your attention to a very special service of hope and renewal that will be led by uh, fellow lay leaders and our clergy team Sunday night at 7.30 p.m. And Monday night, a very special opportunity to join with our racial justice initiative leaders, along with Dr. Maureen Walker for a talk on getting along in a time of conflict. And that is seven o'clock. You will see uh, many classes continue this week. Check your TBE news. That's all I have. Kiddush. Let's raise our glasses. Who's going to lead us? Cantor Suffren? Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Borei peri hagafen. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, Asher kiddishan b'mit v'otot v'ratzavanu v'shabat kodsho v'ahavahu v'ratzon hinchilanu zikaron ma'ase v'reshit ki hu yom techila l'mikra yekodesh zeichel etziyat Mitzrayim, kivanu v'chata, yotanu kidashta, mikol hamim, v'shabat kodshecha, v'ahava uvratzon, hinchatanu, Baruch atah Adonai Mikadish HaShabbat Amen. L'chaim. So before we go, once again, Susan, mazel tov to all of our confirmands, our high school graduates. Uh, we wish you a hearty mazel tov. We're incredibly proud of you. It's good to see everyone. We hope we'll see you soon. Let's say motzi, and then uh, we'll unleash the, the crowds to wish each other a Shabbat Shalom. 
Cantor Suffren, now that you've been parodied, I sure hope you, you bake a <laughs> today. Actually, tonight is the one night I didn't bake a challah because oh, I received. But Rabbi Sapphire has one. Here we go. Oren, you going to lead us? Here we go. Ah, Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Let's Shabbat unmute Shalom. everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Shalom, <laughs> 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 Oh, oh. your eyes that fast. Oh. Oh, Rachel's kids are really involved in this. I don't know who that is on the white side. Susan Karen. See you, Ellen Strauss. Goodbye. Uh, family outside. I Okay, don't don't get up yet, honey. Oh, bye, buddy. Well, let me just. Hello, little sapphire children. Bring this in first. Get my hollow away. Where the doggy gets it. No, I mean, the hollow's not for you. Cut it out, silly girl. <laughs> Just get up in the chair first, stand up first. Okay. One, two, three up. Grab the walker. Grab the walker. Hold on to the walker. Right here. Okay. Push his under my.